and this can happen by inhalation and it can patient can get exposed by inhalation or ingestion so two phases initial phase shocking dose initial phase and the exposure sensation happen shocking dose subsequent exposure muscle activation massive release of cytokines and the clinical symptoms so this you can see what should be the quality of the antigen polyvalent why should, why this quality is important you can see this is actually wrong there is there should be multiple antibodies coating the surface of muscle so polyvalent antigen should it should uh, on one hand should attach to one antibody so on the other hand should attach to other antibody so what happens basically is cross linking cross linking of the antibodies coating the surface of muscles will result in muscle activation and result in uh, elaboration of muscle associated cytokines okay so you can see this antigen presenting cell takes up the antigen gives it to th2 now you can recollect th2 takes part in type 1 hypersensitivity reaction so you can see this b cell as all the cytokines il4 il13 b cell differentiation to ig producing plasma cells ig gets produced coats the mast cells cross linking of the anti bodies by the anti polyvalent antigen release of mediators what mediators it can release <coughs> the mediators can be preformed stored mediators or freshly synthesized mediators what are the preformed mediators it will have it can release histamine serotonin uh, plated activating factors among other cytokines i can freshly synthesized most importantly arachidonic acid metabolites <laughs> so release of mediators leads to smooth muscle spasm so what will be the downstream effects of the mediators smooth muscle spasm will happen vascular dilatation will happen increased vascular permeability will happen and the recruitment of for the inflammatory cells so this will fall will followed by late phase response of recruitment of additional leukocytes most importantly the second phase leukocytes is dominant the first phase mast cells they just take up the initial activity then they just recruit the eosinophils uh, what is the hemotactic factor for eosinophils there's a most most you know like uh, we have certain chemotactic factors for each of the wbc they have to be attracted towards the site what is the chemotactic factor for eosinophils eotaxin it's as simple as that so eotaxin yeah, with the help of mast cells eotaxin will be secreted that will recruit the eosinophils then eosinophils will say by um, mast cells will say bye bye and uh, later damage will be taken care of by the eosinophils Okay, so that's again a picture showing you. Here you can see this picture specifically chose because of the poly. Here it is bivalent the antigen. You can see an antigen attaching itself to the two antibodies, resulting in cross linking, resulting in discharge of the mediators. So all these are the mediators. Initial phase is vascular dilation, vascular permeability, smooth muscle spasm. Late phase mainly epithelial damage, cellular damage. <coughs> okay. So two forms, systemic form is anaphylaxis, localized form is auto atopy. So again, each and everything is a question, each and everything is an MCQ. So most important cells of type 1 hypersensitive reaction is it's mast cells. If it's just like that, it's mast cells. Most important is late phase, eosinophils. Most important mediator, we have certain set of cytokines for TH2 response, IL4, 5. 9, 8, 9, sorry, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15 and all, TGB is histamine, sorry, it's the mediator is histamine, cytokine is IL-4, what is the purpose of IL-4? IL-4 will drive the differentiation of B cells towards IgE producing plasma cells. Most important cytokine in late phase is platelet activating factor. Most potent eosinophilic activating cytokine is IL-5, IL-5 is the growth factor for eosinophilic. Coming back to our question, so this particular patient has got type 1 hypersensitive reaction for the following issue collapse. Most important cytokine and type 1 hypersensitive reaction is IL-2, true or false. IL-2 belongs to IL-2, 12 interferon gamma for TH1 response. So here it is not. Here the answer should be IL-4. Exposure to monovalent antigen in sensitive individuals is type 1. It's polyvalent. Most potent eosinophilic activity is IL-5? Yes. 
genetic predisposition is the most important factor of course yes in a hall if 100 of us are here not every if pollen pollen grain is ex, we get exposed not all of us will uh, have the similar symptoms not all of us will have symptoms so only those are genetically predisposed the answer is yes this are only so this, these two are the options So type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. So you know type 4. What is type 4 hypersensitivity reaction? All the granulomatous condition, all the cytotoxic condition. So this contact dermatitis kind of condition. All these will come under type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. What about ulcerative colitis? Is it not granulomatous? Crohn's is granulomatous. So among the intermittent bubble diseases, Crohn's is granulomatous, whereas ulcerative colitis is non granulomatous. So TH1 for Crohn's note it down. TH1 for Crohn's, it must know. TH2 for ulcerative colitis. Okay. And Crohn's disease, yes, it's granulomatous. Silicosis? No. Silicosis, sarcoidosis is granulomatous. Silicosis is not a fibrosing lesion. It's not a granulomatous lesion. Myasthenia gravis? Do you have a granuloma? No. That comes under type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. We'll come to it later. And Coombs positive hemolytic anemia. So this comes under type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. So come to the hypersensitivity reaction. These are type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. This type 1 we discussed in detail. And this type 4 again we discussed granular matters. Coming to this type 2 and type 3. What is common between type 2 and type 3? What is common between type 2 and type 3? Antibody mediated. Both are mediated by antibodies. <coughs> okay. So what is the difference then? What is the difference between type 2 and type 3 antibodies? Type 3 hypersensitivity reactions. Good Rishi. So that's similarity. And what is the difference between type 2 and type 3? So when antibody attacks the antigen present on the surface of a cell or on the, or on the matrix, it is type 2. You can see the antibody is attacking the antigen. Here in this case, the antigen present on the red cell. At this antibody is coming and attacking the antigen on the surface of the cell. But type 3, three is what is the other name for type 3? Antibody is immune complex hypersensitivity reaction, right? So this, here the antigen antibody complex, you can see the complex happens in the circulation. The complex formation happens in the circulation. That gets deposited on top of any cell of its uh, favorism. So if, if you have its own favorite sites, it, they are, these can get deposited in any site. So this is the basic difference between type 2 and type 3. So that's the, in a nutshell, so all your organ specific autoimmune disorders will be Type 2 because in pernicious anemia the autoantibodies are against the against the in pernicious anemia the autoantibodies are against the parietal cells antigens. So it just come and attack the parietal cells. So it is organ specific. In in a myasthenia gravis, autoantibodies are against the neuromuscular junction. So all these are attacking the antigen present on this at that side. So organ specific autoimmune disorders. Again, lot of uh, Modifications have come in this. So, like for example, type 1 diabetes, which was under type 2. Now it has gone to type 4. Though there is antibodies, the primary destruction is due to cell mediated immunity. And again, um, the Hashimoto's aridectus. It is organ specific autoimmune disorder, right? So there the antibodies are acted against the antigens on the surface of the thyro uh, thy thyrocytes. Now the main destruction is by the cell mediated immunity. Now it has gone to type 4 hypersensitive reaction like that. So many disorders are moved out from type 2 to type 4 hypersensitive reaction. Examples include type 1 diabetes mellitus, um, in, uh, the pernicious anemia again, Hashimoto's arthritis. All these disorders have mainly type 4 hypersensitive reaction. That's the recent uh, modification that has come out in the latest problems. So type 2 hypersensitive reaction again to recollect, you can see antigen is present on the surface of a cell, antibodies attacking the antigen which is attached to the cell. 